throughout that is that it's exhausting as hell to sit around and listen to people all day. I thought you guys would get a break, so I, everybody okay? You with me? Yeah. All right, perfect. Uh, the other thing I think I just learned today is that you never follow a guy who makes movies. How am I supposed to follow Nonetheless, here we are. I'll uh, try to get through this relatively quickly. Uh, CSR is fundamentally just, it's a very weird thing. The only reason why we're here talking about it, the only reason why I've had decades of conversation about it is because it is fundamentally a weird thing. You've got companies taking their private wealth and transferring it to the public domain. Why in the world would they do that? Well, also going a bit later in the program means a lot of people have already stolen my thunder on a lot of these points, but let me walk through why it is that we, some of the reasons why firms would actually give their money to the public good. And one of the reason, of course, is just because they don't have a choice. They're required to do it. There's some sort of government regulation that says that you can't enslave your, your labor force. You have to give them a uh, 40 hour work week and time off uh, for, for uh, labor and so forth uh, for maternity leave and things like that. Uh, but we tend to think of CSR more as a discretionary activity, not something that's necessarily mandated by law. And so they may give to the public good for reasons uh, of moral uh, obligation. They feel that they have some sort of moral obligation to do so. There's an ethical uh, content to what they do, and so they decide they want to do it for that, or the flip side is that they just would feel guilty if they didn't do it, right? So they, they think it's the right thing to do, they feel good about doing it, or they feel bad if they didn't do it. But I want to offer up an additional perspective. Why would a for-profit firm do anything? Well, the name, or the, the reason is in the name in and of itself, and that's for profit. Right? A for-profit firm is going to do things because they think that they're actually going to make a profit from it. But again, this is that weird thing. How is it that by taking money, if I take $10 from my wallet and throw it out to the audience, why would I expect that by the time I'm done talking, I'm going to have 12 bucks back in my wallet? Right? There is a fundamentally weird thing about it that you're going to profit by giving things away. How is it that you're going to actually make that happen? Well, let me talk through some of the logic of why that may be the case. So the first thing to recognize is that firms aren't islands. They're open systems. They exist in an environment where they need resources. They have to obtain inputs, they have to sell their outputs. And the folks who control these resources that they need, we call them stakeholders. They control key resources that the firms need to survive and prosper over time. And these stakeholders are sapient beings. They have discretion. They can decide whether they want to actually give these resources or not, to whom and on what terms. And so if we consider that they have this ability to decide where they give the resources, we can see that firms can actually profit by obtaining their inputs for less, selling their outputs for more from these resource holders. If they can get their inputs for less from stakeholders who favor them, if they're not denied key resources like locating uh, a burrito place uh, because they're a nice firm, for example, then they're going to succeed more so than what a firm that doesn't have that particular opportunity. So then the next logical question is how do they get the stakeholder favor? I've been playing with a lot of, with a lot of the uh, PowerPoint animations. So. Uh, so how to gain stakeholder favor? <clears throat> Just if you weren't quite clear on what a stakeholder is, because we haven't actually defined it uh, thus far, those groups without whose support the organization would cease to exist is kind of the standard definition of stakeholders. But there are lots of different things that different stakeholder groups can do for firms if they like those firms. So as we talked a lot about here, uh, employees, for example, right? Employees. <laughs> especially more so nowadays, like to work for firms that are socially responsible and they don't like to work for firms that go out there and kick puppies and they don't want to tell their mom and dad and all their neighbors that this is the kind of place that they work at. So you tend to attract a better quality workforce, for example. Uh, lots of different ways, lots of different stakeholder groups can give you lots of benefit if they like you because you're a good corporate citizen. And on the flip side, which often sells well to managers, is the problem that if you're not good, if you're not socially responsible, they can withdraw those resources, they can punish you in a variety of ways. Right? Chipotle has an easier time locating in places. Walmart has been trying for decades to get into the New York City area, but Target can, while Walmart cannot, for example. So some of the, uh, the placement decisions, some of the regulatory decisions, communities allowing certain uh, uh, operations in their, uh, in their backyards depends upon what they think of the corporation. <clears throat> so this kind of logic has been shown in a variety of studies. Hundreds and hundreds of studies support the same, the same logic. So we've mentioned, several speakers have mentioned this idea that people want to work in socially responsible firms. Studies have shown that indeed socially responsible firms have an easier time attracting higher quality workforce. 
And they've also shown that there are positive uh, financial implications of being, for example, less polluting than other firms. Or if you're a bank and you invest, reinvest in your community, you tend to have a higher return as well. And on the uh, flip side of that as well, if, if you don't do enough to uh, ensure worker safety, you have an explosion, people get hurt, injured, die, you tend to lose financially as well. So many hundreds of studies that have shown that there is this positive relationship between firms' level of social responsibility and their financial performance. All that sums up into what is described as the business case for corporate social responsibility. And this is broadly accepted. We've, talked, we've heard uh, many folks speak about their belief in the, uh, the logic of the, of the business case for corporate social responsibility. Walmart, the, the, world, the world's largest retailer and the US's largest employer, openly touts the business case, right? At Walmart, we know that being efficient and a profitable business and being a good steward of the environment are goals that can work together. And Starbucks, of course, has for a long time also been spouting the, the same logic. High ideals don't have to conflict with the bottom line. When we reached out to the community programs, people bought more of our coffee. Values can actually enhance value, as revolutionary as that may sound. Our shareholders think so too, right? So we've got lots of companies, high profile ones, even Walmart coming around to the very clear logic that there's money to be made in being socially responsible, right? So that's it. I'm done.